The VXP targets are back for a second round, and there are a few very interesting things I'm going to explore in this target, as well as some tests that some of you guys have been asking for. Towards the end, I have a very slight update on the build I talked about in my previous video, so make sure you stick around. I'll try and link in the YouTube chapters feature when I'm hitting the target and which countermeasure I'm talking about, because that's going to be the focus of this one, a little bit on the ships as well, but definitely countermeasures. And of course, I will link the updated build or put the timestamp for the updated build so you can jump right to that if you're interested. Now, the fleet that I'm using to test in this target is something that you should not copy. Some of these builds are on purpose and are not going to work on purpose. The first ship is shown right here. Obviously, this just has specials. You'll notice the Kenjutsu countermeasure special that will be on the final build discussed at the end. This first ship has four or five torpedoes, two gales, and two cormorants. The gales are not going to work. The cormorants are going to work. The second ship right here just has all torpedoes. It's a damage ship, but not the final build. And the third ship has something that a lot of you have been asking for, which is the deep sea countermeasure. Let's jump into the target and see what we can find. A few very, very interesting things are going to happen because the way countermeasures work is really, really tricky, and Kixai has, well, maybe messed this one up a little bit. So there are actually uh, three general types, damage types of countermeasures in the game. We have damage type countermeasure, damage type anti-missile, and damage type anti-mortar. Sometimes you see anti-missile and anti explosive as the same. Sometimes you see anti-mortar and anti-explosive as the same. Now what I want to do is take out a few of these ships so I can show you a few of the different antis and work and where they don't. Notice that I didn't mention we had anti-rockets or anti torpedoes those don't really exist. We have a countermeasure damage type that shoots down rockets and countermeasure damage type that shoots down torpedoes, but nothing specifically tagged as anti-torpedo or anti-rocket, which is why Kixai saying anti-torpedo works in this target is just a little bit confusing. Again, is probably because there's a new person in a particular role, but you can't really fault anyone for that. We're all just trying to play the game here or make interesting targets, and that's what I want to show you here. So, the important ship for mortars is going to be this mutineer right here. Now, I'm driving subs, which you may or may not know because the timer on these things is set so that they only surface every 9 minutes. Actually, every 15 minutes, 900 seconds. Really, really long time. What you're going to see, though, is that this mutineer is going to shoot at me, going to shoot mortars at me. That would make you think that I would be able to take down I mean, mortars with my gales. Unfortunately, gales do not have a specific line in their text that says fired while submerged. Right here, rockets are shooting at me, and gales are not firing once. Now, my deep sea countermeasure should work. Everything on the stack block says that the deep sea countermeasure should fire at the incoming mortars because this is damage type countermeasure and fires at mortars. Unfortunately, it doesn't. And I guess my only explanation for this is that Kixai has the mortar projectiles tag with 100% anti mortar evasion and 100% anti-countermeasure flak evasion. Regardless, as you saw, my ship with deep sea countermeasures did not fire and my ship with gales did not fire. The ship with gales definitely couldn't because it was underwater, so I will try and show you just one example here of actually being surfaced while getting shot at just to show you that gales definitely work. Now the one countermeasure I'm not going to show you in this target is going to be the sprints. Sprints should actually work in this target against rockets. However, you don't actually take any damage from rockets in this one. Therefore, I think they include in a countermeasure of something that, that would, first of all, only fire while surfaced, and second of all, you never take damage from would be pretty silly and is not really intended. So again, just going through and taking out tips. Now, the next thing I want to show you is going to be the cormorant countermeasure, because this one is really interesting and is what you're actually going to end up using on your final fleet. Now, to do this, I'm going to end up surfacing a few of these guys here. And by the way, my ships are, of course, moving at different combat speeds because they are not complete. Now, cormorants are going to fire. They're designed for using on your submarines. They'll fire when underwater perfectly. What I'm going to do is hopefully actually just take out this, uh, whatchamacallit here, this guy right here, the Rhino, is, is, the, is the particular ship of interest. I am surfaced right here, and as you can see, cormorants are firing. firing. I am shooting at the incoming torpedoes. It is not a whole lot, and it's hard to see. Also, look, I'm not shooting at sprint at, the, at these rockets here. Now, I would shoot at these rockets if I had sprints on 
but because you can take out the stuff with no damage, it's not really going to be relevant. Now watch the incoming torpedoes closely. As you can see, they're shooting at me, and you can see some gray dashes. Maybe I can even zoom in so you can see those for sure. Watch the, there are some gray dashes leaving my ships and heading for the incoming, uh, incoming torpedoes, which again is exactly how cormorants work. Now, cormorants also work like gales in that they keep shooting multiple times at the incoming torpedoes if they don't take it down on the attempt, which means that you can benefit for having multiple. You can benefit from having more so that if your first one misses, your second one can shoot at it. The question then becomes, what's the correct number to actually include? How many cormorants should you actually include in your fleet? My recommendation is eight. Some people are going to end up putting on more than that, and maybe they'll work better. But I'm going to put on eight. The trick I'm going to use, however, is using a particular special, which is the Kenjutsu Countermeasure Special, which is going to work better than what the kicks I gave us, and better than what most people are using. And I'm going to do that, which will be my cormorants are going to reload more quickly, may actually be able to fire um, at these incoming torpedoes, reload again, and shoot at them more quickly than everyone else's are going to. So obviously with two cormorants here, when I engage one of these uh, subs at once here, it's not really going to do anything. I'm, I'm, most of the stuff is still getting through, but I think with eight on there, I would shoot at every incoming thing at least once, maybe a second time, and if you're actually moving away from this guy, Kind of trying to kite him, you will do a lot better. Obviously, two is not enough. Somewhere between eight and twelve will be the perfect number, but again, more than that. Now, I do want to try and see if I can show you the you near when I'm serviced to show you that the gales don't work on them, even if you happen to be surfaced. So I showed you the cormorants work. I showed you the gales and deep sea don't work when you're underwater. I talked about when sprints are going to work, which is when you're inside this cat build in our of water, which again shouldn't happen because you can actually take out this guy right here without going into the cap field, at least the way it's set up in these targets, and I imagine it has similar. The last thing we need to test is if you can get shot at by mortars right here while being surfaced, or if you can countermeasure mortars while being surfaced, which as you can see is not happening. There are no yellow dots, there's no whatever kind of thing the deep sea countermeasure is. I'm not taking out these. Oh, look at that. Whoa. I'm not sure what that is. That might actually be the deep sea countermeasures. That's wild. Well, uh, I have been proven wrong here in the process of making this video. What you saw there was the deep sea countermeasures, or maybe even the gales or something, shooting at these incoming mortars. But the edge case for them to actually be useful and to be surfaced in a cab aura while actually being shot at by mortars is very, very low. The other thing you saw is that my antis, which they were, the gales or the other ones were, and actually we can test and see which one that is. We can put our gale over here, and we can put our deep sea countermeasure one over here. Whatever ones they are, they're really not very effective and are actually, let's see, oh yeah, it's the gales right here. The gales are firing when you're, when you're above, above, above water. That's really interesting. Now they have really bad reload and aren't firing the ace, but as you can see, uh, you know, it, the gales are shooting. However, the projectile speed on these things is so incredibly low, it's really not taking any. You have to be surfaced for, for that to work, which is just stupid. Why would you sit here and take extra damage for that to work? Let's see if the deep sea countermeasure is going to work. No, it doesn't look like it is. It doesn't look like the deep sea countermeasure is working and taking down these gales. So, hey, gales do work, but you have to be surfaced and instead just run into the minimum range. You'll be fine. Now, obviously, I'm not are you here for to show you some stuff? That's really interesting. Gales work in terms of the fact that they are going to actually shoot at something, but because you would have to be surfaced and would have to be above water, there's really no reason to use them. Why why would you use gales? You have to you know, get inside the cav range of something else. All you have to do to, to kill the ship is run inside its minimum range. That's all you gotta do. Right here at the mortar stop firing completely. And the projectile speed required to actually take things down so incredibly high, um, it's really just not worth it. So in summary, if you take away nothing else from this video, it's that you should use between 8 and 10 cormorants on your entire fleet and nothing else. There are potentially a few edge cases where Kicksai might do something really weird and really tricky to make it so that some target later down the line might actually benefit from putting gales on your fleet, you know, a giant cavern over someplace. 
don't think that's likely. The way the designers have made these targets, I don't think that's likely. So let's take a look at the bit of battle report that can be sometimes a little cool. A lot of concussive, a lot of explosive, of course, because I sat there. My damage is concussive. They have 50% resist for some reason. Don't ask me why. And, you know, here's the here's the damage. That obviously my fleet, you know, not the right build. But I think that was a pretty interesting hit, and we learned a whole lot there. Sprints and Gales can both fire, but they need to be submerged in order to do so, which means that that's not very useful in here. Let me show you the stat line I'm talking about on the ship. So if we go into our shipyard and we select our skirmish over to our mirage, look at the countermeasures. You can see cormorants have a little stat right here, a little line under underneath that says can fire while submerged. And the gales here, they don't have that on there, which can yet to be surfaced, which means inside a cab field taking extra damage already. Gales worked, which was really weird. I didn't expect that to happen. And deep sea countermeasures right here, you can see their damage type countermeasure see all that. damage type countermeasure you know they should work they should be firing they're not for some reason. couldn't tell you why again sprints are kind of similar you know it says it takes down uh, uh, rockets but you have to be surfaced in order for it to work because it doesn't say fire while purged but all your torpedoes and stuff obviously have that fire while purged so i don't think you want to put on countermeasures that you have to be surfaced in order to work the only thing you should use is cormorants Okay, let's switch into talking about the final build I showed you. I'm still intending to do a few damage ships and still intending to do a few uh, countermeasure ships. I'll just quickly show on, throw on all of the torpedoes, specials. I won't go over them into detail and give you the secondary options for those. I'm just going to plop them on very quickly, the build that I had ahead of time, and talk about the differences. Now, the damage ship, again, should be no different. I'll just have to select those and show you where it is. I'm intending to build two damage ships for the first raid, unless the flagship comes out with something really weird. TSM did a great video talking about evade options for this one. I won't get into making an evade build for the flagship unless we see it has more than 41.5 million armor point space, so my build for the damage ship is completely un. I will actually just warn you that a few people have noticed, uh, if you have all regular torpedoes and the U1 heavy weapon for the damage ship, you're going to be overweight. The it's actually the, the limited torpedoes that have the wrong weight here. It's 4,000 instead of 8,200. But what this means is that you can't build this damage setup, setup which it has remained unchanged, with all of the regular torpedoes. You have to build the damage setup with at least three limited torpedoes. I had a few commenters on that. Really good observation there. Try and get three limited torpedoes per ship that you intend to do as damage. If not, that's probably going to change how some of this stuff works. Um, that's the damage setup again, two per fleet, that has remained changed. What has changed is my build for my countermeasure ship. So I'm actually, and actually thanks to a few commenters for pointing this out, I showed you the mirror maze defense system. Countermeasure is the only important stat here. Countermeasure range, 75%, that's normal. Countermeasure reload is 30% for that number. Also remember the plus 40% reload. This is what I had showed you, that's what Kixai has done. Now with this one, Again, because I think it might have been someone who control and not their not their fault really. Um, there's a better there's a better special. We can use the also limited Kenjutsu countermeasure system. Came out a long time ago. Thing to something like that. what this is is this gives you instead of that thirty percent countermeasure reload, it gives you seventy percent counter. Much 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 better, and you don't get the uh, uh, reload. You can accuracy. So depending on the exact evade of the enemy, it might be better to go for this one. Now, obviously, you should do this with your ships that have cormorants. I told you was the number to go for, potentially 12, somewhere between that. But I think with the better countermeasure reload special and the better four countermeasures per ship, you can build two countermeasure ships at two damage ships, and you have to see what the flagship is. That's either going to be a damage ship like everybody else, or it's going to be an evade tank. That will depend based on the armor points of the flagship. So, two ships like this, two ships like the damage version, and the flagship will be damaged for now. And again, my here. I am for now using all concussive armor. It's actually a pretty safe bet to lean into that. I think torpedoes are going to be the biggest threat. It will be damage. a tiny, tiny bit of guaranteed explosive damage from those mutineers like you did there. But again, getting their minimum 
were completely fine. Obviously, equip the weapon uh, at, when you're up to U1, which most everyone should be in the first raid. It's, it's less than a day upgrade time. Um, so that's kind of my thought here, and that's what I would go for. The only other change to consider was taking off one of these offensive specials probably would have actually been the Hexfire Gatling countermeasure ship and putting on something with a really, really high trial speed and uh, maybe high velocity range was the one I was going to go for. You know, insanely high projectile speed might help your countermeasures more effectively, but you lose so much of your concussive damage. I don't think that's worth it. I thought about it, but you can do that if you choose to. Maybe that's a refit. We'll do part way through your first rig. I doubt that. So I will put my builds for the ships that you saw, the two damage setups and the two countermeasure setups with this one in the build stock, which you description two videos. By the way, I did update my countermeasure special choice here even before VXP. And of course, thank you to channel members for supporting me and keeping the build stock open for everyone to see. I want to give a huge thank you to the channel members whose names appear on the end screen now. They're helping keep the channel running and are why I can provide things like the build stock. If you find that doc or these videos helpful and want to support, you can click the join button on YouTube. As always, and until next time, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.